AO and dark brown in this case. The hook is a Camasan, it's a B160 size 8. The base is a short shank. It's a, the shank length is equivalent to a size 10, but the gape's a size size 8, which suits a big fly like this style of fly. Or this style of dry fly, anyway. Simply going to start with at the eye, and we're going to take the thread down until we're in line with the point of the hook. And then trim away the waist. Then I'm going to bring the thread halfway back up, just this point there. Now, for the wing, you could use quite a few things polypro and synthetic, like a dry fly wing or some, some a parapost or something like that. Or in this case, originally, I'm going to use some bear. This is some body fur from a bear, and this has been dyed a nice brown, a nice dark brown. It's very easy just to trim away from the skin and don't be shy. It's very light here, it's, it's really, really light. And then, basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take away a lot of the guard here. I don't need the last guard here. I want to try and line up the ends and just keep going just to take any broken ends or anything away. Then, what I'm going to do is it's a bit of tangled bit of mess here. Now this is basically a good dubbin as well, so don't throw that away. I'm going to use this as a dubbin. It's just tangled under for, and you can see there's plenty of it. Now it's a very light dubbin, and it dubs extremely well. Now you could run it through a comb, like I'm just going to put it through a wee, wee comb that I've got inside of my desk, just to brush it out. And there we go, you end up with a fair pile of dubbin. Got a few flies with that. Okay, make sure these are lightly lined up. Then we tie this forward of the eye, looking for round about the length of the hook. There we go. And coming with one, two, three, four, five, six turns or so. The this fine dubbin and this fine fibre at the bottom, the under for again you could still use that as a dubbin. I'm just going to make sure that thread's waxed because you need a lot of grip here. And then what I'm going to do is bring the thread to the front and build up basically like build the thread just to lift the wing at this point, just to lift it straight up. There we are. And then I'm going to split it into so equal parts on either sides to form the wing. Let me quick look. Then I'm going to do a like, like a figure eight through. Once you've got it evenly split, then you just do figure eight through. And I'm going to do a two or three first, then I'm going to turn the vise to the side to show you. Alright, I'm just going to lift it up slightly. Now there it's there. Now all I'm doing is taking the thread so at an angle not on the far side, coming to the, the inside here, then taking it to the front. And then just repeating this two or three times or more to make sure the wing's not going to move. And then make sure they're locked down nice and tight. Then come in with your scissors at an angle, it's very quite a steep angle towards the back of the hook. This will help form a nice taper in the body. And bring your thread to the back. And then you want your thread turns to be really close, basically touching. And the tips of my fingers here, I'm just using to guide that those turns and keep them nice and tight on the area and at the same time keeping the cut ends close to the shank so they don't spread out spread apart and you don't want that. By just holding bring your fingers down that makes it much easier to tie it in. And there we are. No tail in this fly, but there's gonna be a body hackle. And I'm gonna use a it's a medium to light ginger hackle. And this is a saddle hackle. And the fibre length is within, partly within the gape, just not too far away, just not too big, you want it quite, quite fine. And I'm just going to bear some of the stem and then make sure it's tied in. Again, nice and tight, take the thread up and then come back down. Now this is the, the, the under fur from the bear. Now it's times it's good to use if you're tying a hair wing tight, 
fly and you need a, a body colour much the same colour it's certainly worth using the underfur and this is the right colour to suit the wing so I'm just going to slide it up and then just as a wind slightly tighten up and make sure you get a nice shape in the body you want a decent thickness you don't want it too thin in this case Looking at the style of this fly, this is the way they're all tied. As I say, this is a request and it's a fly I've never tied before, up until today, so... And there you are. And then I'm going to wind the body hackle up with the natural curve pacing forward towards the eye. And just wind up nice and tight. And that's one, two, three, four. That's about five turns or so is plenty. And then come in, make sure it's tied down and trim away. Now, what it says is to use two hackles to form the collar, to form the main hackle. Now I'm going to use this smaller, this is the cape I'm using here. Now I'm going to use the smaller ones at the bottom, I'm use two. I mean this fly will certainly float okay. I'm going to pull them together and remove the waste and I'm going to catch both the feathers on the side and with the underside of the feathers facing myself so the natural curve is that when I go to wind the curve faces forward or towards the eye just take your time and then as I say catch it in now you need a good mill, mill and a half the back and the front. Now as I come towards the front, I lift the wing, push it towards the back out of the way and then basically tying these two stems together thread down towards the eye and you can easily break them off. Now I usually take the thread back up this balances the area where you're winding the hackles so that they, they sit easier. Now if there's too much of a step or a bump, they'll just twist and turn away or not sit correct. Now you could wind these both together or individual. Now I'm going to wind them one at a time. It's about three turns there. Lift the wing up. And again, just take about three turns in front. And maybe another one, just for good measure. Cross your thread. Lock them down with two or three turns. Just watch your wing, just lift your wing out of the way. Now we trim this away. Sometimes I'll leave that until I've tied in the other one, but it just looks better if I'll remove it just now. Again, three or four turns at the back. Lift your wing and work your way down towards the eye. Once you're happy, cross your thread. Well, one, two, three, four. Just come in with your finger and thumb. Draw the fibers back. Come in with three or four turns or more. And then a wee bit of wax onto the thread. And then whip finish. And there we go. Trim away your thread. Trim away your hackle. And there we go. Just clean, I'll clean the head with the wax. You'll always get a wee bit of residue or so off the, the wax, a wee bit of white. But like anything, if you give it a wee rub, it polishes up. Now all we've got to do is to cut out basically the, our part, the wing, just where the hackles have been wound through and trim away the excess fibres just in between the wing. Now this spool, this helps to stop, especially a big fly like this, catching the wind and twisting. Yeah, so I'm going to do that, that's what it says. And I could understand a big fly like this, that the type of nylon, we need to be reasonably stiff so that it can turn the fly over. And there we are, as you can see, 
it's a nice pattern. I'll come bring this round so you can see the pattern. There you go. Right there, and so basically just in between the wing. It certainly makes it look good, I would say. Uh, and if it helps the performance of the fly, then it's certainly worth doing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And that's fly the call, the now pure.